Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I might be a little hungover today because we did our Toys for Tots party last night. We donated a little bit over thirty thousand dollars worth of toys. But it's do or die time. We got to get this truck running today, and that's all there is to it. Uh, it's super late. It's ten twenty in the morning, so that's how you can tell I am tired right now. All right, let's go do this. <laughs> George gave me a hand and then had to take off. We are running wires. We have our wires over here for our Alumacraft taillights. So these wires run a dedicated power and ground and basically have an internal solid state relay type setup which then uses your actual wires from your regular lighting on that. So it doesn't use these as a power feed to power the lights. It's basically just a trigger signal to turn on whichever relay to turn everything on. Um, I've got my switch up here wired to the kill switch. It's run up to the front and we're about to terminate that. And my battery jump start lugs here, I'm going to tie these up on this side of the frame all the way up to the battery. And uh, this is my switch wire that I've got to terminate and put on top of my relay here. Uh, trying to think of what else we have underneath here. I'm just going to walk in circles. I have my wire from the starter turn on here that needs to be hooked into here. This is my ignition feed that's going to power everything. So this uh, radiator kit came with a very nice dual relay setup, all pre-terminated and everything. So I'm going to use that instead of making my own on this truck just to save some time. And like I said, it's a nice kit. Everything's nice and terminated and heat shrunk. And uh, then I'm going to, as soon as I get this terminated, actually, I'm going to go drop the truck and start doing my uh, bus bar stuff under the passenger seat because I did terminate my battery cable so I can hook that up and get power to the truck, which I don't want to hook that up because I have a loose power wire, power feed inside, and I don't want that arcing out on anything. Uh, would not be a good day. So I'm going to finish up that one termination there. And then we're going to put this on the ground and I'm going to start on the interior and get everything so I can power it up by the um, switch. And it just dawned on me two videos ago, I found out, I remember the uh, batteries in the remotes for the push button start are dead. So I have to go to the store and get some batteries. Crap. Okay. On to the inside after I terminate that wire. Okay, we're inside. It's super cramped. Yeah, I could roll the truck forward and open the door all the way, but I still have stuff I have to go up and down to run wires underneath. But So here's all my, my powers. This is going to be my main supply to the bus bar. My main ground is going to go to the seat bolt right here, seat frame bolt. bolt. Um, these are my fuel pump wires. Then I have wires for vintage air. 
I have wires for powering the uh, PCM that's mounted up behind here. So we're just gonna start terminating everything and getting them all nice and neat onto these bus bars. Well, we are getting somewhere. Here we go. ECM's all powered. I have to run a fuel pump signal wire down to the Vaporworks module that I'm currently sitting on top of. Um, and then I think uh, right now as it sits actually, if I connect my starter wire up way out out front there, I can actually crank the engine over. So I think I'm gonna do that just to make sure that, that section of the wiring works. All right guys, so we're getting somewhere. One last thing I have to run is that top relay over there is my fuel pump relay. So I have to run um, a supply with the relay with the, these PSI harnesses and your input and power is there for the trigger side of the relay, but there's no wires there for the um, supply side to supply the fuel pump with power. Uh, that's because there's way too many applications for them to know what you're doing, so that's how they do it, and then you can run your own wires. So you actually saw me do that on um, the Chevelle. Now, since this Vaporworks module is going to pulse width modulate the fuel pump, that is going to be our fuel pump power. You can see the power in and out and your ground, and I have to terminate all these other loose wires into another Metropack connector and put that in there. Just didn't have enough time or drive to do it today, but I have to run that fuel pump uh, feed trigger out to this too because that will be going to this blue wire that's on this connector. But I have got almost all the stuff behind the dash done. The radio is uh, just needs to be clearanced a little here to mount that in here. Um, I have some more wires I gotta take care of. These are my radio power and uh, switch power. These for the speakers that are in the dash here. Um, but this, I got this. So we have, oh, here it is. My remote, if you see, will hit unlock. Okay, Maybe hit it again. there we go. Um, then we can use the button now. Once, twice, accessory. And we are powered. All my gauges are all on. Got to check engine light because uh, there's always one until the vehicle starts on the factory computers. And I do not have my fuel level uh, sender wires connected back at the fuel sender. But everything else is. And, uh, oh, hold on one second. I'm going to uh, uh, do one more wire and then I want to show you guys something. So I'll be honest with you. <laughs> I was just going to crank the engine over for you. Um... I forgot that I disconnected because we had it uh, temporarily wired up into the starter, but I forgot because we put it on the ground and rolled it forward, that wire hung pretty low and I didn't want to run over it with a tire. So I disconnected it, but engine cranks. Uh, we also have, let me shut this off. Um, we have the fuel system is finished plumbed. Oh, we need to get out of this. So we are finished plumbed here. I started uh, capturing all my wires along with that to get my lengths and everything done. Um, don't mind that, that's not rust. That's actually uh, the zebra wood bed. They cut the bed and did some, some clearance and fitting in here. I, uh, I thought the same thing. I was like, oh crap, what is this rust all over the place? Yeah, no. Um, got my two main powers here that are gonna be run inside here all the way up to the battery. The battery is terminated now. So that's good, it's not tightened yet. Um, my ground side of the switch, which is this switch, is all done. I just have to run an ignition feed out and through. And then we also, I did, uh, I've got this side for my fuel is all terminated and good. Let's see, do we still, and we're still holding, I primed this up about an hour ago and we're still holding pressure. I have no leaks, we went through that. Um, so I have to run the steam port hose over to this connect, uh, port right here. We're starting with laying out the, uh, coolant upper and lower radiator hose. 
Uh, so I think what we're going to do for AC and heater hose, um, we are going to make, so as you can see, this is how the inner fender goes. This one's taken out, but this is your mount, so this is where it goes. So we're going to run these hoses this way and on the inside of that inner fender mount. Um, the AC hoses, we're actually going to run here through a bulkhead straight out to here because the inner fender comes to right about here, so you'll have just this little bit back in here with just enough flex for it. Um, I don't think we're going to drill holes for the heater lines I think because if you notice how far this is between here it's I we you know by memory I was thinking it came down a lot lower but it doesn't so the heater hoses since they are right there I think we're just going to run under it instead of drilling another set of holes to uh, complicate things and just make more of a mess and whatnot then uh, we're sending it over to John FX Innovations because rather than use one of the air raid kits He's going to put us together a nice pie cut uh, air cleaner system or cold air system Which is going to come down through here and bring the filter right under here past here We were going to do a four inch hole and run it through here, but we, there's so much room here There's no need to make a hole. So that's how that's gonna be and this is going to come off obviously and I'm gonna make a clean hose to go into there we also decided I uh, was trying to figure out how I could do my mass airflow sensor so instead of coming out here where you have a risk of hitting the belt I went oh hey we can feed it right through into there so the mass airflow sensor is gonna be mounted right down here in that pipe so I mean we're getting we're getting places it was a rough day I'm still nursing this hangover I didn't have anything but a sub today to try to help me um i'm happy how this came out uh i've got to still you know zip tie make all this neat so it's going to be super nice but uh, i still actually you know what before i leave i'm going to do that i'm going to make my ground cable from this side to the seat bolt and then i am going to um on the other side of the seat bolt underneath i'm going to put a longer bolt in and use that to bolt from the battery to that so i have I've already got a really good chassis ground and chassis to engine and now I'm going to do uh, body I want to have a really good body ground since we're not using a front mounted battery I can't just ground it to the uh, radiator support or inner fender or something up front so we're going to do it here instead um, pretty happy with how everything came out we have I got to search for a couple of wires that I tucked up in there because so we have um, my pink wire is going to be my coolant pump turn on for the heat exchanger pump purple is my TCC interrupt brake signal which is over there um, I have tan and I got to find the other purple which are both to the vintage air setup and then we're close I'll be working on it Saturday and Sunday next weekend because we have to be done <laughs> so we're uh, we're at that nitty-gritty right now and uh, everything is going to work out one way or another. I am going to be fully stressed. But we did raise 30 grand worth of toys, or over 30 grand worth of toys last night for Toys for Tots. So that's that's that. Um, so I'm going to tie up a couple more things here and finish up. And I'm going to get myself some Taco Bell and, and shake this hangover that I'm still feeling. I think it's mainly just exhaustion. I was up late last night. Um, and take a super awesome nap. Then we're going to my mom's because uh, the nieces and nephew are going to make gingerbread houses tomorrow. This is the exciting life I live. All right. Well, until next time, thanks for watching. I will have this. It, it was, trust me, I'm not lying. It, it does crank over. And we had it fire up with some, some starting fluid because I didn't have the fuel system done. Um, but next week I will show you it cranking over, hopefully running. Uh, until then, I'll talk to you later. Oh, before I go, we got a sneak peek at the uh, zebra wood bed after it's been stained and cleared. And this will all be wet sanded, buffed and cut, and it will be glass. But look at the grain in this. This is just awesome.